Can you do one on the actual effects, like the flashes and other shakes or anything like that? Thanks, that will help a lot. Well, you ask and you shall receive. And you a knight in shining armor Be cautious in this dungeon Still the same, different ways Same player, better place Thought I found my way Just walked in a different maze And genius different forever, forever Stuck in my Step one is basically time remap. Make sure that you have your time remap done. And before that, make sure that your markers are all put down and matching up to the song the way you want them to. Step two is optional. It's basically adding effects before you put the zooms and the shakes. The reason why you want to do that sometimes is because zooms and shakes, it's often hard to add effects in with zooms and shakes depending on what, the, what you're using. So I'm just going to go over the effects that I added before I added the shakes and everything. All right, so the first thing that I did was was the, the ball light. So the ball light is very easy. I can go over that really quick. I'm gonna go over a lot of stuff very quickly to make this video short. So the ball light is just CC light rays. And what CC light rays does, as you can see, actually I don't think I need this one, is it highlights the ball or highlights whatever you put it on. Because I trust myself that much. I'm just gonna delete it really quick and put it on again. So CC light rays. I'm gonna put it on and go into the clip. So I want, I want it to be on the ball. So you hit center, throw it on the ball, or wherever you want it at. Like I could put it right here, and that's what it would do. It, it doesn't really matter where you put it. So I'm gonna put it on the ball because I want it on the ball. I'm gonna put it on here, about right here. And unless it moves a lot, but because it's time remap, it won't. You wanna have to adjust it, like um, toggle it on and put down keyframes. But it should be fine. In my opinion, I really don't care. That's fine with me. So. That's one, of, that's one of the pre um, effects that I put on. So let's do another optional effect. So this is another optional effect that I did. And it's just decreasing the opacity. It's 25% here, the opacity is 50 here, and then of course it's 100 here. Another pre effect I did was this color right here. So I did this before I added shakes. So right here. Play a better play. That's basically just, it's really simple. There's more complex ways to do it, but like I said, I didn't want it to be that long. All I did was add, let me just get rid of these. All I did was right click, effect, color correction. I went to, where is it, hue and saturation. I toggled it on and I just moved the, the wheel. So let me turn this off. It's gonna be doing this really quickly. So I started here. I toggled it on, I went into it using U to get into your effects, I went over and I just moved it around. So now it just moves on, its, it changes its color on its own. So that's how I did that, it's very simple. So we're going to get into step three, which is zooms. I'm going to show two ways really quickly, uh, let's see, let's start here. Alright, so the first way is scale, so you hit S and toggle it on and then you drag it to where however far you want the transition to be there's no direct number use whatever you feel as though looks better for you i'm going to zoom this in because it's a zoom in transition i'm going to go to the end of the clip drag it all the way back i'm going to highlight them f9 then you're going to go into the graph editor so um after that i'm just going to move the graph down and if you need to directly copy what I do, go for it, because that's how I started when I was learning After Effects. Um, let me just see. Alright, so that's fine. Alright, so that's how you do a zoom in. And I'm going to show you how to do a zoom out. You just hit scale. Drag this to the back. And then you bring this out. Uh, another interesting thing, this is just for scale. You don't have to do this with the other way. You have to make sure you have motion tile on. So motion tile, this is motion tile off. This is motion tile on. Make sure you set your output height and your output width to 600. Um, you can go any lower. I wouldn't say go in any lower than 200, but that's just me. All right, so you have that out, and this is what it's going to do. So it's basically going from here to here. And basically just do the same thing, F9. Go to your graph editor. The other one went down and went this way, so now this one goes this way. But let's see how this looks from here. Alright, so that's basically the transition. And a lot of these transitions look smoother when you execute step five 
in which you'll see how it changes. So that's the transition just with scale. I'm going to get rid of it now because I don't need it. All right, so the other thing is a pump transition. And a pump and a, a zoom is kind of the same thing. But while a zoom goes from is going in to an out, the, the pump is basically an in and an in. So I'll explain that a little bit more because I know that sounds confusing. All right, so same thing, you use scale, S, toggle it on, go here, zoom it all the way in, go to the end of your clip, put it here, F9, graph, um, I'm not sure which one, is. I'm pretty sure it goes this way, all right. So you'll see what I mean by um, an in to an in. So this is zooming in, and a pump tra transition is a zoom in, and it also starts off with a zoom in. So this is gonna be S, turn on the scale, bring it all the way back here. And do I have it on? Yeah, I already have, I gotta turn this one off, all right. So turn these off. And with here, you're going to have it zoomed in as well. So this one ends with a zoom in, and this one starts with a zoom in, and that's called a pump transition. So you're gonna to toggle that on, go to the graph, and then you bring this down. And you can you can tweak it however you want to. I usually just, you know, there's no consistency really. I just try to, you know, be in balance a little bit sometimes. But this is what it looks like. So that's the pump transition right there. It's just quick. And it looks better when you add like a, a shake, in which I will talk about when we get to that step. So now I'm going to show you how to do it with Blurmo. If you download it, then good. But if you don't, then you can just use the first method. So blur mode to me is much easier because it's not really much you have to do. You just have to remember the graph. The only thing that's different is the graph and the numbers. That's it. So which one I'm going to turn off? I'm going to turn off number two because I'm pretty sure that's the other part. All right. You're going to tog toggle on something called Z-Disc. I don't know what it means. Can't really tell you. You're going to bring it all the way out or however much you want to, and you're going to increase the numbers. So when you want to do a transition like this, when you go out to in, it's the numbers are higher. All right, so toggle this F9. Go to the graph and bring it down. All right, so I can toggle this one on now too, so you guys can see it. So that's the transition. It goes from zoom in to a zoom out. So that's that's that with a uh, blur mount. I'll show you how to do the pump with Blurmo. Blur I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory, but just for the sake of the video, I'll do it. All right, so same thing. Gonna go here. E. I believe these just for video purposes. Going to go to Zdist. Going to decrease the numbers because decreasing is a zoom. Right. Go to the end of the clip. Highlight these, F9. I'm gonna bring this up, over, bring this up, up. So now let's do the same thing here. I'm going to Z-Disc, over. Now it's a pump, so both should start off with low numbers. I'm going to F9. Bring this over, bring this up. So this is what it should look like. So that's how you do um, the pump and the zoom transitions with uh, Blurmo, which is a Sapphire or Sapphire plugin, and also how you do it with scale. All right, so step four. All step four is is shakes. How you do a shake within after effects without a plug-in sorry burping it went out use position so p and then you toggle this on i'm gonna put this in so it won't move so how you start it off is you move it either left or right so i'm gonna move it i'm gonna start right and then i'm going to go about a little bit over here then i'm going to go left and the whole the point of this is to match up the line so that it, it's even 
So I think right here is about okay. Then I'm gonna go here. And then I'm gonna go in a little bit more. So I'm about to stop right here. You're basically just matching up the points on both sides. And I'm gonna go over here. Alright. Then I'm gonna do one more here. And then one more about here. And then we're going back to the center. So about right here. Alright. Another thing is you should toggle on um Easy ease, which is F9, and this is what your shake is gonna look like. So that's how you do a manual shake without a plug-in. It doesn't look bad in my opinion. I prefer not to use it, but that's just me. So if you need to go over that a couple times, go for it. I, I tried to explain it as best as I could. So now I'm just going to get rid of that. Put T on, toggle this. Zero. Alright. So that's how you do a manual shake. Now how you do a, um, a plug-in shake, I'm just going to type in shake. Actually no, because then my other stuff's going to pop up. I'm going to type in S underscore shake. I'm going to put this on the first clip. So what this does is it moves the clip around. It just gives it a shake, but you can like tweak it how you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to toggle on the amplitude and put the frequency down to like 5. So the amplitude's at one, uh, like at the, I guess a thousand. I'm just gonna say one though. I'm gonna put it on two. I'm gonna go down into it. It's right there. I'm gonna go here and then put it on zero, and then put it on easy ease. So let's see. Yeah. So it gives it a little shake. You can tweak it how you want to. Let's try motion blur. Let's try some of that. You just have to test out. So that looks pretty decent. You and that's pretty much the two ways how you do a shake. There's nothing really that much uniqueness to it. Um, step five is the last step. And step five is magic bullet looks. There's the whole shake, there's borders, and there's a flicker, which I'm gonna add for personally myself. That's a flicker there. I'm about to show you guys how to use flicker in general. So I'm gonna go to the top. So what you wanna do is to get this on, which is adjustment layer, you want to do control alt y and that brings up the adjustment layer. See that I have four adjustment layers. Um, so the first one is wobble shake. That's what I call it and this is the type of effect it gives. It's shaking the video if you can't see it. Um, how you do that is, let's see. I'm just gonna get rid of these. Delete. You're gonna go into position. Nope, my bad. Wiggle. You're gonna go into wiggle, and what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna go position, double click position, and double click ro rotation. So for position, put it on 30. That's what I do. You can do it whichever way you want to. And for um, rotation, I do like meh, like six. Sometimes I do 10. It depends. And that's how you do the wiggle. Or the wobble shake. That's what I call it. So it's doing it right now. It's not doing it as much. This is why I say sometimes I put it on 10. Let's see. I put it on 6. I'm going to put it on 10. Let's see what that does. I might also toggle. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to actually change position 2 to like 40. Alright, so change this to two. And you one night and shine it And I'm gonna change wiggle, I mean rotation. Ooh. One more time. I'm gonna change it to two as well. That should be good enough for me. Alright, so that's how you do the wobble shake. Now, um, flicker. Flicker is pretty easy. All you're doing is if you have Sapphire, I don't know how to do it with After Effects alone. So if you have Sapphire, all you're going to do is go to flicker. And it should be S underscore flicker. And I put mine on 0.5000. 
And that's pretty much it. That's all that is. And then you want to get into magic bullet looks. I'm going to completely delete this and just talk about magic bullet looks for a second. Now, magic bullet looks. It's the, it's a little complicated because, like I said, me personally, I don't focus on magic bullet looks that much because I know people who give me presets for magic bullet looks. And it's not really that big of a deal for me to know it. Um, personally, I would suggest that you play with it. But if you need a starter, if you need to learn how to use magic bullet looks and you don't know how, the best way for you to do it is magic bullet looks all ma automatically comes with inputted presets. That may not be helpful for you, but it actually is. So you click on it. It shows you at the bottom how that preset was made. So basically what you're gonna what you're doing is let me just uh clean start. Basically what you're doing is you're going into your tools and you're matching up so subject. Put hue and saturation in the subject, and then you you freak it however you want to. That's basically what you're doing. That's all magic bullet looks is. And depending on if you have time for it, if you want to, you know, use it, go for it. But I personally don't consider myself somebody who's making presets all the time i really don't for magic bullet looks i really don't have time for that it it does take lengthy time sometimes so basically that's what you're doing you're going into these you're matching them up at the bottom and you're matching them up with the things that are inside of it it's really just a trial and error experience thing so i have presets so i'm just gonna go in here and see which preset i like let's see no i don't like those I'm going to go with this one. And then it'll uh, appear on your, um, I just have to turn it on. it would appear on your clip. So that's what it's going to look like. Other thing is borders. How you use borders. Basically what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to, let's go in here. Go to motion tile. Put it on top clip which is the adjustment layer go to output height and put 0.90 my bad it's not 0.90 it's 90 <laughs> so you're going to want to do that but it may not be the same for you it may be different so that's pretty much it that's basically how i, I made the full the full video um let me see if it's going to load Running you a night and shining armor, be cautious in this dungeon. Still the same, different ways, same player, better place. Thought I found my way, just walked in a different maze. And genius different forever, forever stuck in my all right, guys. I pretty much tried to make this video as self-explanatory as possible. Not really that. I tried to go as fast as I could because a lot of people don't like 20 to 30 minute videos on how to do stuff, stuff that's kind of simple. And I would say that I talk a lot. So um Hopefully this video is up to your liking. If it's not, I am sorry. I could redo it or I could just do a watch me edit. All right, so with that being said, if you want me to do a tutorial on something else that you really don't have any idea what you want, uh, I have a proposition for you guys. You can go on YouTube and type in um, best, sports, uh, best sports edits in After Effects. And I guess if you want to, you can just go through that. And if you can put a time duration in the comments and let me know which part or which one you want me to go over on how it was done or if you see an effect that you like, you can do that and I'll do a tutorial on it because I really don't know what else to do a tutorial on. It's kind of like stuff that pops in your head or whatever. So that being said, I hope you guys like the video and I'll, I'll see you guys next time.